Mathematicians solve the mystery of the human sperm tail. This is on Cosmos Magazine, Cosmos uh, Mathematics, just in this month. A new journal paper reveals mammal sperm evolved reinforcements. Co-author Hermes Gadella from UK's University of York recounters this discovery and what it means for IVF. Every time a man ejaculates, about 55 million sperm are released. That's if his sperm has a normal sperm count. Now, this is equivalent to more than six times the entire population of London or New York and more than twice the population of Shanghai City. But, of course, not all of this, these sperm will go on to become babies. In fact, only around 15 sperm are able to make it through the female reproductive tract. This is because for a sperm, the journey to fertilize an egg is a treacherous one. And now our new research has discovered that what gives human sperm the strength to succeed in the race to fertilize the egg, it's all to do with their tails, the tails of the sperm, that is. In the reproductive tract, sperm encounter a complex chemical and physical landscape. The sperm must escape the deadly acids of the vagina, penetrate the thick cervical mucus barrier. This is around 100 times thicker than water. Not get trapped in a cervical crypt that leads to nowhere. Endure uterine contractions to evaluate, eventually find the tiny opening that leads to the oviducts, the tube through which an egg passes from an ovary. This is all while being attacked in the uterus by white blood cells. This all takes place before a sperm can penetrate another thick protective layer that surrounds the egg. All this may sound excessively difficult for the tiny sperm, but these barriers are there for protection. The uterus is designed to receive the baby, and the sperm could be an invading force carrying diseases. Our research has discovered that it is a reinforced outer layer which coats the tails of human sperm that gives them the strength to make the powerful rhythmic strokes needed to break through this jelly-like cervical mucus blockage. Making the discovery, sperm tails or flagella measure just the breadth of a hair in length and are increasingly complex. So to find out more about how they work, we use a virtual sperm model to compare the tails of sperm from humans and other mammals which fertilize inside the body with sperm from sea urchins which fertilize in open water outside the body. We found that the tails of the sea urchin and human sperm share the same blend, bendy inner core. It seems that the tail of sperm in mammals may have evolved a reinforcing outer layer. This outer layer, or cape, gives them the exact amount of extra strength and stability needed to overcome the thick fluid barrier they come up against in internal fertilization. Using our virtual sperm model, we created a Frankenstein sperm by adding and removing features of the tails from different species so that we could identify how each one functions. We also increased the liquid viscosity for the various sperm to swim through. What we found was that when the virtual sea urchin-like sperm was made to swim through liquid as viscous as cervical mucus, their tails quickly buckled under the pressure, which meant they were unable to propel themselves forward. In many cases, this trapped the sperm to swim in circles. Human sperm, on the other hand, thrashed around wildly in a low-viscosity liquid like water, but in thicker liquids they swam with a powerful rhythmic wave. This is also found in actual experiments with sea urchin sperm and human sperm swimming in thick substances. Of course, we, of course, we don't know which adaptation came first, the strong sperm or the cervical mucus, or whether they co-evolved. Finding the fittest sperm, but these findings are not only interesting from an evolutionary perspective, they could also help to lead to better sperm selection methods in fertility clinics, which would enable doctors to easily identify the fittest sperms. In the UK, one in seven couples are classed to having reduced fertility. That, that's shocking, one in seven. And sperm dysfunction in the most common cause. Sperm count in Western men has halved since 1970. Halved. That's terrible. 
and male fertility has become a global challenge. One in six couples receives fertility treatment in the UK, and for every 100 children born, one of those children will have been conceived by IVF. But it is also very difficult to have a baby via IVF. One of our four pregnancies ends in miscarriage. Birth success rates from IVF in the UK range from 2% to 33%, depending on the woman's age, with under 35 standing a much higher chance. And if you do need to pay for treatment, one single cycle of IVF, including fertility drugs, normally costs between £3,000 and £5,000. NHS, that's National Health Service, only provides up to the three IVF full cycles, but this can depend on the postcode lottery of where you live and what your GP can offer. Now, our research highlights the precise adaptation of the human sperm tail that enables it to swim in the cervical mucus, and this emphasizes the importance of imitating the natural selection of the reproductive tract while assessing and screening sperm for use in IVF. This is an important finding in the current sperm count used in clinics in a poor predictor of fertility in high viscosity fluids imitating the cervical mucus are still not currently used in clinics. It's clear that then that more research and in-depth clinical tests are now needed to assess the impact of our findings on future IVF rounds. This is uh, by Hermes Cadella lecture in uh, Applied Mathematics, University of York. The article was republished from the Conservation and to center, of course, Creative Commons license. This is on Cosmos Magazine. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.